my father and two of my brothers have worked through there and my brother's brothers and my granddad. Collie was probably built on coal, so it's been going for over 100 years now and that's what most people here have worked in. Collie, a couple of hours south of Perth, is synonymous with coal. Around a quarter of the 4,700 jobs in the town are in the coal industry. See you, chicken. Yeah. Brett Loxton is an electrician at one of the town's mines. It's only 10 minutes from home. You don't have to travel that far. You can always be close by for family and all that sort of things. You don't have to be far away. And it's been great to be so close to home. For a lot of those years, I've been lucky I haven't had to go away to try and find work. The Black Rock has been Collie's lifeblood for over a century, but like countless other coal communities around the world, Collie is at a crossroads. Demand for coal is going down. Uh, that means that uh, the cost uh, to households and the cost to industry uh, of government continuing to buy coal is becoming higher and higher. The WA government recently announced plans to shut down Collie's two state-owned coal-fired power stations by 2030. About 1,200 staff will be affected by the decision. Those jobs, those people have to go somewhere, whether they go fly and fly out or whether they just pick up the whole family and move. The town will slow down and I know a lot of people think other industries come to town, which we'll believe that when we see it. So these are all the different the hats that we used to wear. Retired miner Ron Guilfoyle can't picture the town without coal mining. I don't know how it's going to continue on unless something, something else comes here, but, yeah, I, I just don't know. The state government is promising to retrain or re-employ workers over the next few years. Not everybody that works in the coal industry lives in Collie, but for those that do, we want to make sure that there's new, relevant jobs to them, and that's why we've got a big commitment to... Uh, to transition industries. We're looking for uh, new industrial opportunities that our blue collar workers could transition straight into. And one that I'm really excited about is um, magnesium processing, which is a brand new technology to Australia that is really well placed to sit here in Collie. At the moment, WA's electricity system is made up of about 40% coal, 40% gas and 20% renewables. This decision in Collie is being driven by the economics of the electricity system in Western Australia as uh, renewable energy rises, particularly rooftop solar. While the WA government says the decision to quit coal is about economics, closing the coal-fired power stations is also crucial for the government to be able to reach its recently announced target to reduce emissions from state assets by 80% by 2030, a goal the Greens say doesn't go far enough. Western Australia's emissions are some of the highest in the country, certainly on a, on a per capita basis, and they're still going up. So we've got a long way to, what, what way to go. Getting rid of coal is a good logical first step. In fact, it's an economic step, it, it's rational. The real danger here is that Western Australia fills a big chunk of that power with gas, which is still carbon intensive. As part of the shift away from coal, the WA government will spend $3.5 billion over the next decade on renewable energy, including wind power and fast start lithium ion batteries. It's also considering pumped hydro. The difficulty with setting up pumped hydro in Western Australia is it's pretty flat here. But the state government believes Collie might have the potential to host the energy storage system if one of the mines could be converted into two dams. There's four or five different groups that are proposing pumped hydro projects and uh, we are very keen to engage because if that can work, it'll be a really big, uh, important benefit to this decarbonisation journey. One of the big questions I get asked is, what's the next thing after coal? And the answer is lots of things. Uh, so we've been looking quite broad and wide at the different sorts of industries that we can attract here. And so tourism was a really easy win for us. We're in a really beautiful part of the country and we had lots of assets that were just sitting there waiting to be capitalised on. All right, we're doing a bit of kayaking today. Simone Fraser started an adventure tourism business a few years ago, aimed at attracting tourists to Collie's waterways and bush trails. 
People are starting to realise that there is more to Collie than coal. So people get here and they're a little bit surprised that there's so much water and art. So we really love to show people around and um, show them all these great things in town. While Collie is building a reputation as a tourist destination, locals know growth in that industry won't replace the blue collar jobs in coal mining. There's a lot of people coming through town for tourism, but when they come through and buy a salad roll and bottle of water, it doesn't do much. Brett Loxton hopes his kids will have plenty of job options close to home in the future. It's just not yet clear what those will be. I'm not a city person. I like the lifestyle of being in this town, and if they are the same, I hope my kids definitely have the option if they want to stay close by, like the opportunity that I had to be close to home. If they like living in this town, then I wanted to be able to make a life of it.